These are Domino Catapults from Mark Rover's company Crunch Labs and today I'm going to be walking you through two of my very own builds that incorporate these toys. Let's get started. So as you can see, these things are just loaded with possibilities. So when they first arrived for me, I got straight to work designing some builds that could take advantage of the toy's chain reaction design. Then all I needed was a 20 second build montage to put it all together. We'll start with build number one, which I like to call the easy off. Have you ever found yourself in this situation where you just finished reading a chapter of your book at night and you're ready to knock yourself out when you realize the light is still on? Now you hesitate to turn it off because you don't want to leave bed, but you can't fall asleep until you turn it off. So what do you do? Well, you spend a few hours designing, building, testing, and calibrating a mechanism that solves both of your problems at once and do it this way. This awesome design makes it so you can easily turn off your light at night without leaving the comfort of your bed. But getting to this final design was not that easy. In fact, we had to go through multiple variations of it until we arrived at this one. My original idea was to have a ball be the one to hit the light switch and turn it off. But it turns out that the catapult does not give the ball enough momentum to hit the switch with enough force to turn it off. So we decided to pivot to a different system where the catapult was the one that triggered something else heavier that could turn the switch off. And that landed us on this ramp and matchbox car idea. And that worked great, but it did not work perfectly. In fact, our entire design only succeeded in turning the light off about one out of 10 tries. Now, this is no surprise if you know how the toy works. So let me give you a quick rundown on the toy's mechanics so you understand. So basically you have a rubber band that wraps around the toy's frame and this wooden piece here. Then that piece also connects to this red one here and the ball basket. Then you have the launch plate that is connected to this wooden piece here that has a bit of an indention. So when you cock the basket back, it stretches the rubber band down and moves the red piece until it gets caught in the indention of the launch plate holder and stops the rubber band from contracting. Then when you drop a ball on the launch plate, it gets pushed down, moving that indented wooden piece out of the way. So now there is nothing to prevent the rubber band from contracting back to its original size. And in the process, it pulls the wooden piece that is attached to the basket up and launches the ball into the air. But here's where the problem lies. Wherever you drop a ball on the launch plate, the catapult system acts differently, as shown here. So as you can see, if you don't drop the ball in the exact same place every time, then it's hard to determine where to set up the next catapult so it will get triggered by the ball. But the thing is that humans are not perfectly accurate and are not able to hit the plate in the exact same place every single time. And if you look at this top view here, there are around 45 different places you could drop a ball on the plate, thus meaning around 45 different outcomes. And that is what made the easy off system so unreliable. It's because we had a human dropping the ball in the first plate, thus affecting how the first catapult hits the second catapult, and that affecting how the second catapult hits the third catapult, and so on. But after hours of tweaking and testing, I found that if I aimed to hit the plate in this area here, then it would be the most likely to give the ball the right trajectory, to trigger the rest of the catapults in the right way, to eventually turn the light off. Moving on to build two, we have the room security system. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, oh, look at that. Oh! This awesome Crunch Lab security system prevents anyone other than yourself from entering your room without some consequences. For not only does the intruder get pelted with four foam balls traveling 14 miles per hour each for crossing the property lines,
at the same time, they also trigger the ball ramp system that triggers the catapults that eventually trigger the happy birthday song. You get an auditory signal that, you know, your defenses have been breached. Now this whole idea originally came from one of Mark Rober's build suggestions for the tripwire toy. Maybe you have a tripwire that runs up and around on the door frame to a bowl of popcorn. So when your sister or brother enters the room, they hit the wire, it kind of pulls it down, and it tips the popcorn on their head. So I took that idea and I twisted it into something similar. Just be prepared, this is the type of thing that's going to take a bunch of different prototypes and tweaking to get right. That is a solid piece of advice right there. This one took so much tweaking and changing to get it where it is today. My first idea was to have the tripwire be the one that shoots a ball into a ramp on the top of my bookshelf that slid down and hit a configuration of catapults that ended with a ball triggering this snap circuit board that would play the happy birthday song. But when I started testing this design, I realized that the tripwire could not aim high enough to hit the top of the bookshelf and that it was not predictable enough to land a ball into the ramp consistently. So I decided to pivot to this design where the ramp is much lower and the tripwire connects directly to the ramp system through these duct tape rings. So when the string was triggered, it would set off the tripwire and pull on the top of the ramp to start the ball down. Then the rest of the design was pretty much the same. Now this one actually made it to the building stage and eventually ended up complete. Now that sounds like the end of the story, but not quite yet, because after running some tests, I realized that the boxes I combined to make the circuit board housing were not sturdy enough and kept falling over. The hole on the top of the box was too small of a target for the ball to hit consistently, and when the tripwire was triggered, it would get pulled violently out of its place and suffer some damage. So that meant back to the drawing board for me, and after a bit of redesigning, I ended up with this. I moved the tripwire to face the door and added an extra crossover point to ensure the tripwire didn't get pulled too violently. Then I reconfigured the catapult and got a bigger, sturdier box to hold the circuit board in. Then added a golf course themed bowl on top of the box to make sure that the ball would fall into the hole every single time and make triggering the song much easier. It's that process of tweaking and changing and learning and modifying that gets you to that really good solution that really covers your brother's head in popcorn. Thanks for watching.